Okay. Do you see the recording? Yes, perfect. Yes, everything is okay. Great. Okay, Sarah, so should we begin? It's four o'clock. Yeah, sure. Are Let's you start. Perfect. Are you ready? Great. I'm ready. So welcome everybody to our webinar on Timio with uh, Raspberry Pi and Microbit. After a summer break, we are really very happy to see you again to celebrate the beginning of the school year. And today we have three quality speakers. Yes, exactly, Sophia. Actually, as I said at the beginning, we have uh, Norman, which is a, a lecturer at the Singapore University of Technologies and Design. He teaches mainly first year programming courses in Python and Java, and he will show how to connect Timio with Raspberry Pi and how he works with Timio uh, with a Raspberry Pi. So, so he will be here just at the beginning because in uh, Singapore it's uh, 10 p.m. So if you want to uh, uh, ask him a que questions, just uh, ask him straight away on the chat and he will reply after his speech. And the second, the second lecture will be Tanya Katarina Kaiser, which is um, a researcher's assistant and a final year doctorate candidate in the service robotics group. And uh, at the Institute of Computer Engineering at the University of Lübeck in Germany. Her research interests include swarm robotics and evolutionary robotics. Tanya and her colleagues use Timio robots in research and education, including, including undergraduate courses and student project work. In her talk, Tanya will present an overview at the group research and, and teaching activities using Timio 2 robots. There are extended with Raspberry Pis as well. And Julian Petzl uh, from her team will be available as well to reply to the question, but at the end of the, of the webinar, it will be here. Uh, the third speaker is our Pierre Verbiste, is a primary teacher from Belgium, but as well as team teacher and trainer, uh, and as well Timio ambassador. It will be show how to work with Timio and Microbit and what he have done with this class. Thank you, Sarah. And we really encourage you to enjoy, ask all your questions in the chat. We always have moments to exchange and ask the questions. And we remind you that this webinar is recorded and after will be broadcast via social network. And we are going to let the floor to Norman. Are you ready, Norman? Yes, I'm ready. Great. So you can share your screen. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yes, we can hear you and we see your presentation. Okay, that's lovely. So uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon uh, in Europe. And I'm Norman and I'm a lecturer at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. And today I'm just going to share with you uh, what, how we at SUT use the Timo robot in our first year programming courses. Okay, or rather there's only one, one first year programming course. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. Tell you about the Timo, how we use the Timo robot and our experiences and reflection. And a bit of an introduction to Singapore. We are a country of 5.5 uh, million people located in Southeast Asia, one degree north of the equator and uh, uh, being an island, we are surrounded by the sea. So those of you in France, Switzerland, um, you know, can, um, can come over and uh, see the sea anytime. Yep, right. Okay, uh, and a bit of about my university, the Singapore University of Technology and Design. So we have six universities in Singapore and we are the fourth university. And we primarily offer five courses or pillars, uh, which are based on engineering and architecture. And I'm from the information systems, technology and design pillar, where we offer a computer science course. And where we teach uh, first year programming is in our course called Computational Thinking for Design. And in the second half of this course, we uh, introduce students to Python and many of them in, the, in this course have not done programming before. So we have to teach them the basics of uh, how to do programming, uh, variables, if else, for loop, while loop, and so on. Okay, and this course being the first course in the university, we grade it as pass or fail. And um, uh, in order to introduce um, uh, hub, uh, applications of 
programming to hardware, we have two lab sessions in our course and we use, we run the lab sessions after we teach them the fundamentals. In other words, as you can see, uh, once they have uh, gone through loops and lists and strings, then they are ready to begin on our lab sessions. And in our lab sessions, we mainly use the Raspberry Pi with various uh, uh, peripherals. And one of them is the Timu robot, which we use for one activity in our first lab. So uh, why the Timu robot? So uh, since our university started um, early in 20, uh, 2014, so we have um, used robots in our, in our introductory programming courses in our introductory programming course. And we have gone through various robots uh, which have all their, their uh, advantages and disadvantages. And we noticed that students generally are very happy to be working with the robot because they get excited and motivated about um, providing a program to make the robot move. And so in 2018, after trying several robots that gave us um, problems, uh, we actually uh, introduced Timio and he has worked well, he has worked very well since for us. Okay, and so we are very happy to be using, continue using the Timio. So uh, when we used the Timio in 2018, uh, there was no Python library for it. So my colleague, Dr. Oka Konewan, wrote a Python library, PyTimio DW. Uh, and uh, I, I believe if you Google this PyTimio DW keyword, you should be able to find the documentation. And um, I would just like to say here that we look forward to the official Python library from Box. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, in case uh, if there are people in the audience who are not familiar with the RPy, uh, actually what you can do in with the RPy is to run Python either through the to the terminal or with the graphical with the IDE, a graphical user interface. So and there are many, there are several available when you install the Rust. Uh, Raspbian OS. Uh, one of them is the IDLE, which is the easiest um, Python IDE to, to be used, and students can write programs on using IDLE very easily. Okay, so that's that's what we use uh, in our lab sessions to uh, we get the students to run Python programs on the terminal and as well as IDLE. Okay, so um, for the Timo Timo robot, it has two wheels which can be uh, control independently, and you can by issuing these commands. Uh, you can see that uh, the command that we use in our library has two uh, input variables: one for the speed of the left wheel, and one for the speed of the right wheel. So what you can do is actually to get the robot to move forward, to turn left, and turn right at different speeds by just changing the numbers in these commands. Okay, and what else does the Timo have? The Timo has proximity sensors all around. And it has also two proximity, proximity sensors below. So these sensors are used to detect markings on the ground. So when the sensors detect a white zone, it will return a large number. And when the sensors detect a black zone, uh, it will return a small number. And we actually show students a video of how it's supposed to work. Uh, I have a link here, but perhaps uh, I could share it later on in the chat. Okay, so that's the proximity sensors. Okay, so these are the two things, two features of the Timo that we actually use in our lab session. Okay, so what do we get students to do in our lab activity? Essentially, what we have is an activity that uh, students are supposed to write a Python program to make the robot move forward on the white zone until it meets the black zone, and then the robot is supposed to stop. Okay, so that is the uh, first activity that we actually get them to do. So how do we actually um, uh, help them to uh, realize this Python program? So uh, essentially what students have to do is they have to revise the if else, uh, while loop, and also the sleep function from the time library because they need to use all these concepts in the lab. Okay, and after that, they have to learn and write, be able to write the commands to move the robot. So they, we first get them to just do a simple program to move the robot to go forward, uh, to turn left and then to turn right. Okay. Then the next thing we do is to teach them or show them how to write a program to read the proximity sense proximity sensors. So in other words, we tell them the code specifically from to how to read the proximity sensors and get help them get used to uh, how the code is being used and the readings that they will get from the proximity sensors. Okay, so after we teach them all this, 
then we give them a challenge. Okay, bearing in mind, these are univers university students, so they should be a bit smarter. So we, we, we gave them a challenge for them to put all these concepts together to write a program for the robot to move forward until it reaches the black zone, just like what I showed you here in this uh, picture. Okay, right. So, so that's, that's essentially what we use the Tino robot for. And of course, uh, in order to teach them uh, how, how, how to do it, uh, what, we, what we have here, uh, what we give students uh, is a lab manual, which, and we tell them that they must read the lab manual in, in advance, and we also give them videos to, to help them visualize what is supposed to happen. And of course, we describe the task inside the lab manual as well. So they are actually, when, we, when they come to the lab, they are expected to be uh, independent and work on it independently. And of course, there are instructors and teaching assistants around to, um, to help, uh, help them if they have any difficulties. Okay. Right, and, how, and what do we do to help them uh, write the program? So what we do is that we first give them a starter code where they just have to run the code and observe what happens. So the starter code that you're looking at now here, uh, starter code that you're looking at is a starter code to teach them how to read the, 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 the proximity sensors that, that you've just seen. Okay, so they are supposed to run the code and observe what happens and understand how the code is being used. So in other words, the values from the ground sensors must be put in a while loop that is an infinite loop. Okay, then after that, when it's time for that challenge, what we do is that we'll give them a template because we can't um, they, they will find it difficult to start programming from scratch. So we give them a template and we tell them the steps. Okay, and uh, they are supposed to translate the steps into the Python code and complete the challenge to, um, to, to fulfill what the task requires for them. Okay, so, so in other words, uh, the code templates help them to, uh, as a means of scaffolding to make the task and the challenge easier. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's, that's how. And of course, uh, if they have any difficulties, uh, there's always instructors or teaching assistants to help them. Okay, so that's, the, that's how we uh, teach them. And of course, uh, after they finish the task, uh, we must make sure that they have, they have understood what's going on. So what they do is that when they have finished the task, they approach an instructor or TA uh, for what we call a checkoff, essentially, the students have to demonstrate that the tasks have been completed and we will ask them questions on what they have just done to just help to ensure that they have understood uh, the concepts that, that they are supposed to have learned and to make sure that they really did the task by themselves. Okay, so um, uh, if, if you are thinking of introducing it into your classes, you would have to grapple with the logistics. So we have, uh, we assign two students per, per kid, which means one Raspberry Pi and one female. And uh, each class has 50 students, so we are talking about 25 kids per class. And there, there are sometimes uh, three classes in parallel. That means they, they three classes occur at the same time. So you can imagine the amount of equipment that we are dealing with. And so we have uh, lab officers to actually help us with the, the setup and test, tear down and, and also replacing equipment when they, are, they fail in the middle of the lab session. And this is what one of the lab values look like with uh, students from Singapore. And they actually, uh, uh, I didn't tell them to post for this photo, but they saw me taking a picture and they post for the photo anyway. Yeah, and that, that's how we run the lab session. And of course, that's the teaching assistant uh, there in the corner. Yeah. So uh, when, you, when we run this lab session, for the first time with students who have not learned programming before, uh, there are some common difficulties that uh, they, we observe that they encounter. So firstly, they are unfamiliar with the hardware. So they are scared to uh, touch the equipment or they connect wrongly. So the instructors need to actually encourage them to just um, do the connections and help them to check that they've done it correctly. Yeah, um, and also they're they are not there for the students, they are not familiar with the, soft, the hardware, so they don't know how to troubleshoot. So when you troubleshoot, you essentially go through a list of possibilities and eliminate uh, them one by one. So we instructors have to show them how, that, how, how this is being done. 
And lastly, uh, some students don't realize why the code for the tensors need to be an infinite loop. So uh, very often we just help them to re realize it by asking them what what if the what would happen if the sensors are read only once? So would would it would the would, would that help you to achieve the task at hand? Okay, right. So I'm coming to the end of my talk. So uh, just a quick summary. We use the Dino in lab sessions after the basic programming concepts have been taught after lists and strings and. Uh, we get them to do a challenge, which is to get the robot to move forward and use the proximity sensors to detect a black zone. And we, I have just told you some of the student difficulties that we have observed, given that they are, uh, it's their first time learning programming. Okay, so with this, uh, I end my talk and thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to, to be part of this webinar. So I welcome any questions now. Thank you so much, Norman. As uh, Sarah says before, Norman is in Singapore. So if you yeah. have questions, now is the moment to ask him before he leaves. I so have already a question actually, because um, Norman, I know that you have been working with Python, your, your, your Python, which is not supported by MOPS yet, but since we are yeah. working in a open, uh, open source environment, uh, yeah. of course, you know, everybody can uh, develop his own. And, um, actually, I've been asked if you could share with us what you have been doing and your documentation, if it's possible. I don't know, actually, I didn't ask you before, but um, since there are as well some lectures from university here and uh, not everybody are working uh, in this way, it would be very, uh, very uh, nice to have, or if, if you can share as well your presentation. Sure, uh, I can. Certainly, I, I have given you a copy of my presentation. I could, yeah, the uh, presentation, but yeah, uh, yeah. not the and links. The links, sure. Uh, in fact, you will find, I can send you a separate email, uh, but you can also, I think you can come to the PDF here and you can click it at, at, in this link. Yeah, but I, of course, if you can't find it, just let me know and I can, I can uh, send it to you. That's great, thank you. Yeah. I will uh, share straight away after, after we're, after, yeah. You finish your your replying to question. Does anybody has some question to Norman? Um, actually, myself, I was uh, I was quite surprised that as well at university level they are working in pairs. So, how did you see uh, this working in pairs with the university students? How how was it? I think it's great because um, um, some they they get to choose. Who they work with and they choose their friends and and because of that they have a very good rapport with the other person and so with and because of that uh, even if you have two of them who are not strong in programming uh, very often we see that these this kind of students who have a good rapport even though they are not strong in programming they tend to finish the task uh, quite fast yeah so it really helps them learn from each other yeah yeah it's a good way i think to acquire yes. knowledge sharing yes yes that's right so if anybody else has a question to norma or my, maybe if he would like to raise the hands and uh, you know just uh, ask the question because we don't have so much time and uh, we would like you know him to go to to sleep <laughs> as well so don't don't hesitate we will leave you like 30 seconds to think and we will just uh, pass to the next uh, speakers. Okay. Otherwise, it's gonna be a little bit long as well. Okay, so I, uh, okay, what I'll do is I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Norman. Yeah. I see that we don't have uh, uh, hands up or questions on the chat. So Norman, thank you again for your presentation. We let you go. Okay, exactly. uh, it's my pleasure to be here, and of course, thank you, very, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And of course, I will now uh, leave the chat. Thanks a lot, Norman. And if I have any other question, maybe I will just send you by email. Sure. All right. Thanks then. a lot again okay. for being here. Right. Bye bye. Thank and you. Bye bye. Bye. And now we are going to go into the next presentation. That it's a video that uh, we have from Tanya Katarina Kaiser. And I will begin the sharing now. That's okay for you, Sarah? Yeah, sure.
And uh, we will have as well Julian afterwards at the end of the webinar the, to reply to your question. Exactly. So I begin the sharing and you tell me if, uh, do you see my screen, Sarah? Yes, everything okay. is good. Okay, so I begin now. Hi, my name is Tanya Kaiser and I'm from the University of Lübeck. I'm sorry that I can't be here in person today, but I hope this video will do just as fine. In the next few minutes, I will talk about how we use a Themio 2 robot that is extended with the Raspberry Pi in research and in education. First, I give you a short overview how we use the Themio robot per se in our uh, research group and in teaching. So in the first semester of our bachelor program, we teach robotics using the Themio 2 robot uh, as it is. So no extensions, it's just the robot and the provided a SIBA studio and a SIBA playground to program it and to simulate it. And then in the higher semester, in the fourth semester for the bachelor course, we extend the robot with the Raspberry Pi to enable it, uh, enable students to program it in Python, and we simulate it in the WeBot simulator, which is open source and comes with a Themio model. And then we also have student projects and theses, and there we do more complex stuff. We also use like the setup with WeBots and Python, but we also use ROS2 and the Gazebo simulator. So we go the full spectrum from uh, simple, pure Themio 2 robot to uh, sophisticated methods that are used in, in Australian research with the robot operating system. So education as the full spectrum, and as I said before, research is uh, just the part where we use the Raspberry Pi on top of the Themio robot and then the ROS2 part. Uh, next, I will show you an extended version of the Themio 2. And keep in mind, this is already a quite extreme example, but I thought it might be interesting to see. So we see here um, a battery pack on top of the Themio 2 robot. And then there's the Raspberry Pi uh, attached. So the Raspberry Pi is uh, powered by the battery pack, and that is used to program the robot in Python. Additionally, we added a PCB for extra sensors. And there are two light sensors attached to it and a pressure sensor. So we added more sensors to the robot, uh, which is possible via the Raspberry Pi again. But you obviously don't have to do it to use the robot with the Raspberry Pi. And then a beautiful thing is as well that the Themio has Lego attachment points. So we use that to add a bulldozer plate to the robot, um, which then is used to push around blocks or something. In education, we use it in the mobile robots course, and there are three tutorials with the Themio 2 robot that is extended with the Raspberry Pi. The first one is an introduction where we do a hardware setup so people uh, install their SD cards, try to access the robot via SSH, and write a simple program um, that when a robot detects the uh, border of the table, it tracks back for a certain time period and then turns on spot for a certain time period. The second uh, tutorial is then um, an arbitration task. So students implement three different behaviors that's cruise, avoid, and escape. And then like an arbiter which uh, selects which behavior is executed right now. And the third uh, tutorial they have to do is to implement the B-Cluster algorithm that's uh, from Swarm Robotics and that's robots group at a certain spot in the arena. And in that case, it's the brightest spot. And uh, you can see it in this video here. It's a bit sped up and it's actually a combination of two things. So it's the B-Cluster algorithm uh, that we use in research and education. And then there's the Tangible Swarm project, uh, which we use for bachelor's theses and student projects to bring it forward. But uh, that's already like a research line of our group. And they're like, uh, you see these projections on top um, or like these half circles next to the robots. And these indicate the waiting time of the robot in the light. And um, so, the tangible swarm project is to give you some clue what's happening in the robots, what is the state of the robots, and is visualizing it uh, in a very nice way. 
Unlike the robot, the extender robot I showed you before with the bulldozer blade, we of course used it as well. And we used it for the blind bulldozing algorithm. That's a simple algorithm inspired by ANS, where um, they push blocks outwards until kind of a wall is uh, built just by this pushing process. And uh, there was actually a bachelor thesis I supervised. So the student extended the robots and implemented the algorithm to show that the new setup works as a proof of concept, let's say. And um, yeah, here we have this big arena and the arena border is uh, not real walls, but it's mirror film. It's what we used before in the B-class as well. And this allows us to differentiate between other robots, which we detect with the horizontal infrared sensors and the walls because there we use the ground IR sensors of the Themio and uh, that gives more information to the robot by using different sensors for different things. Now we are coming to more research-oriented projects. Here you can see a human swarm interaction project by my colleague. He's working on the Chronopilot EU project. And in the experiment you can see here, there is a participant uh, in the video, it's me, who sits at the side and who can control the swarm of robots. Here again, the theme of robots um, extended with the Raspberry Pi and the markers you can see it on top is for the tangible swarm project. And the participant, has to make sure that the robots don't leave the arena and can do so by pressing a button and the button lets the robot spin on spot for th up to 30 seconds or until you release the button. And um, at the same time, physiological data is recorded um, to see the effects of the task on the participant, like how stressed the person is, if there's a flow state, etc. Then we also use artificial intelligence and to create swarm behaviors. So um, in that case, it's evolutionary algorithms. It's not going into detail how it works, but um, it optimizes um, controllers for the um, robots, for the themios, and uh, these swarm behaviors emerge. And we did that both in the WeBot simulator and on real robots, and uh, it worked quite fine. A more complex example is like using artificial intelligence to do a camera image reconstruction. So we attach additionally to the Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi camera, and then the neural network is trained and it tries to compress the images. And then uh, as you can see in the top right corner, on the left side is the original image, on the right side is the reconstructed image from uh, what the robot or the neural network makes out of it. So you can even do like sophisticated stuff with it uh, by just adding a camera to the robot or like other sensors or just evolving or creating behaviors um, with AI as it is. And last but not least, we also have like a project running which uses ROS2 with the theme to robot. The Python allows, uh, the Raspberry Pi allows you to run ROS on, on it, and then you can program it with Python again. Um, and here it's in the Gazebo simulator. You can see simple behavior. And we also try it on the real robots. It uh, works just fine. So if you want to teach uh, the robot operating system, the Themia 2 is also a platform that can be used. So it's very versatile. So um, I hope you got a good impression what is in general possible with the Themia 2 robot uh, if you extend it with the raspberry pi and you have uh, any questions for example about technical details or about how the tutorials are or something just contact me drop me an email and I'll try to answer in a timely manner thank you very much for your attention thank you so much of this video of tanya katarina kaiser i will stop the sharing Great. Yes, this is uh, work actually from a university, so don't be afraid uh, of, of the complexity. Actually, is that there, there are researchers that are, that are working on, on, on robotics and, uh, yeah, as you said, as well, artificial intelligence, which was uh, for me as well something new uh, that I saw. And actually, right now we have a speaker, which is a uh, 
lecture from primary schools, which will, will show how to connect Timu with Microbit, which is, uh, who is uh, Pierre Verbist, is a Belgium teacher from, uh, uh, from primary. And it would be easier than the one we uh, just saw. So Pierre, if you want to uh, take the, the stage, You are mute, Pierre. And just a small reminder, the questions of the video that we are going to take are at the end, okay? Because we have one colleague from um, um, Tanya that is here and he can answer the questions at the end. But first we have Pierre's presentation. Je crois que ton micro, c'est bon. Okay, oui, je pense. <laughs> voilà, je lance ma vidéo. J'espère que ça fonctionne. Voilà, est-ce que tout le monde la voit? Uh, Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Verbist. I'm a teacher, but also a STEAM trainer in Belgium. I'm delighted to be with you today to present this video about Timeo and the Microbit card. Let's first discover how to connect the two. First of all, the procedure and all the files needed to connect can be found at the following address. Once arrived on this site, three steps will have to be done. First step, you will have to prepare the computer so that it can communicate via Scratch with the Microbit card. To do this, you must install the Scratch Link program. Choose your operating system from the options provided. Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, and even Android. With that done, you can now move on the next step. Second step, you need to prepare the card itself by installing a small file. First, make sure that the card is connected to the computer with a USB cable. Next, download the small HEX. Then, transfer this file to the card. Once this is done, it should indicate a word, its name, continuously. This will allow you to recognize it during the Bluetooth connection. Third and last step, it is almost ready. We still have to install the extension in Scratch. Open the Timeo suite, choose Scratch, and then the robot you want to program. Once in the Scratch interface, you will now add the Microbit extension. This is located at the bottom left of your screen. From the list of extensions that have been added to Scratch, you can select the extension you want. If you have followed the steps above, you should see your card and its name in square brackets. Click on Connect and go to the editor. And now you have all the blocks you need to program your card. After this somewhat technical part, I will now present the activities that my students were able to do this year. Here is the first sequence, a simple little program. This is the first challenge I offer to my students. Use the physical buttons on the board A and B to make the robot move forward or stop. When button A is pressed, it will move forward at a certain speed.
when button B is pressed, then it will have to stop. Let's look together at the result. It's very simple, but already a lot of fun for the kids. Believe me, here is the first great activity I was able to do with them. Remote controlled timer. In this activity, the cart controls the timer. The basic challenge was to use the accelerometer of the card to guide the robot. A little bit like the game controllers of famous Japanese consoles. The inspiration came from another activity on the timer website where, on the same principle, a Thymio guided another one, as you can see on the picture. In order to help the children to visualize what they had to realize, I prepared this small demonstration. Lorsque l'on penche la carte vers l'avant, alors Thymio avance. Lorsque l'on la penche vers l'arrière, Thymio recule. Si on la penche sur le côté, Thymio tourne. Here is a draft of a program made by a student at the end of the first sequence. Now let's look at the result of this little program. Isn't it amazing? I would like to present you now the future activities that I have prepared for this year with this group of students. Here, in relation to the activity they have already made, we are going to ask the Taimyo to interact and send information to the microbit. My idea is to present the famous rest track that we receive with the Taimyo and to program two activities, first the lab counter and then the stopwatch. I already prepared a rendering for my students of what it should look like. First, we will have a time here that they will have to program to complete the lab inside, between the black lines, so in the white part. This is an activity they have already done. And then we will come and place another time here in the place where the image of the lab counter is on the mat. This one will be connected to our microbit card and it will display the number of laps made by the time here. I will then organize a competition by team, the first one who succeeds in making five turns. Knowing that the more refined the program of the time here that runs, the faster it will go to complete its turn. In a second step, I will propose them to realize the following project, the stopwatch. This one is more technical than the lap counter and, therefore, presents a nice progression, a nice challenge for them. Third project, the idea is to completely link the two systems. So, to really have a bidirectional communication, to send information from the timer to the card and from the card to the timer. And so for this, I have come up with a little new activity, the red light, which I will present to you. First of all, there will be a black line which will symbolize the stop sign and a red light. I'll still need to think about this activity. Will I use a real traffic light since we can connect small elements on the cart or just use a system of symbols? Either way, the flow should be like this. At the beginning, the light is connected to micro bit and the light is red. The time you reaches the black line. There. There is a first request that will be made to see at the level of the car. Is the light red or green? If it is a red light, obviously the timer stops on the line. As soon as the light turns green, the card will send an information to the timer and it will start again. The desire here is clearly to create a system of transmission and reception between the two. I send an information, I receive it, I send a new information etc. 
Before ending this video, I wanted to share with you this simple but very useful little creation, a 3D printed support to hold the card in the pencil hole on the timer. If you want to print in two, you can find this model on the Thingiverse platform. Merci de m'avoir écouté. Une fois de plus, je suis vraiment ravi de partager avec vous mes expériences avec le formidable robot Timio. Et à bientôt pour de nouvelles aventures. Thank you so much, Pierre. Uh, Thank you. In French, we say une pépite d'or, you know, in English, it's like a gold. Wow, I am impressed of this nice video with all the animations that you have uh, done. And now we have time for the questions. So Sarah, did you receive some questions? Um, actually, I didn't have any question from the chat, uh, but maybe if somebody wants to raise his hands and maybe ask questions directly, either to, to the team of Katharina, either to Pierre, if you want to ask questions in French, So we have somebody who's writing now. Um, so this is for Pierre. Pierre, for the red light activity, how does the microbit see the red light? Uh, en, en fait, c'est la microbit qui envoie l'information uh, au Timio via une variable. Donc, il y a une variable qui est transmise. Donc, si le feu est rouge, le, la variable indique qu'il est rouge. Si uh, il est vert, uh, elle indique forcément qu'il est vert. Et euh, en fait, le Timio, à partir du moment où il arrive sur la ligne, va se renseigner sur le contenu de cette variable pour savoir si c'est vert ou rouge. Maybe Sarah, can you translate into English so all the others can understand just... Uh... Yeah, so is uh, the Timio through microbit, if I'm not wrong, right, uh, Pierre? That is uh, sending through a variable the, the, uh, the information. It was the write my resume. <laughs> I think yes, Sarah. And Pierre, how old uh, were those students? 10 years. 10 years old. But uh, as we saw, actually, the last, um, your last presentation is still not done. Your thing is still about this project. So we are very, very uh, looking forward to see what, what is going to happen and uh, how do you, will you implement these activities? And uh, I'm very uh, glad uh, we'll be sh showing and sharing, uh, sharing actually with other people because uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Thank you. For Italian, yeah. And do you have any other question for Pierre or for Tanya? Do you maybe, um, uh, Sophia, have, have you have your a question for him or for Tanya? I didn't receive any questions on the private chat. Mm -hmm. So um... let me check if I... Now we have a question, Sarah. Microbit, is it programmable with Python? Is it possible for the Timio and Microbit? That's a question from Thomas. Is it possible with the Timio and Microbit? So, uh, Pierre, do you want to reply actually? Euh, oui, j'essaie de, de, de comprendre la question. Donc, euh, est-ce que c'est possible de programmer la, le Timio et la microbit avec Python euh, mais Ici, ça ne, ça ne se posait pas puisque les enfants étaient, euh, étaient peu âgés. Donc, je ne l'ai pas essayé. Je suppose qu'il doit y avoir moyen, certainement, oui, de les faire, euh, de les faire euh, correspondre aussi via, via Python, puisque tous les deux se programment en, Timio, en Python. Donc, ça doit être faisable, oui. Is it something that we never, never uh, actually uh, experienced But it would be nice actually to, to try. 
and um, maybe uh, Eve, if he's on uh, available, uh, can reply as well. You will have more uh, more hints about. Uh, that. Excuse me, I was replying to, to another uh, participant. Can you repeat the question, please? If you can, uh, if you can uh, actually connect uh, Timio and Microbit uh, through the language of Python. This is something that never uh, I never expressed. Uh, I'm not sure you, you can do it directly. There are ways to, to connect uh, the Timio. Um, I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking about it. Uh, you you have to, to find a hardware way to, to connect the Timio to the microbit. And I'm not sure there is a direct way to do it. Okay, uh, we never with the with the USB part. Uh, actually, you you can connect uh, the Timio to a computer. You you can also connect the the microbit to a computer, but you cannot connect both uh, directly to each other. Okay. So you, you have to to have an intermediate for that. Okay. Thanks a lot, Eve. And. Um, Pierre, I have another question. How many sessions were needed to complete the project? How many? Combien de, en fait, de... Oui, j'ai compris. Oui, oui. <rire> euh, c'est difficile à évaluer euh, comme ça. C'est Laurent qui a posé la question. Euh, euh, Puisqu'en fait, mes élèves euh, programment déjà avec Scratch Junior euh, chez les plus jeunes, puis programment avec Scratch sans Timio, et puis programment dans Scratch et Timio. Et en fait, ici, euh, ils ont eu quelques séances d'initiation à Microbit, mais au travers de la plateforme euh, MakeCode. Puis, j'ai encore eu, euh, je dirais, à peu près deux séances de programmation de la Microbit dans Scratch. Et puis, une fois que tout ça a été mis en place, ben, je les ai lancés dans, le, dans ce que je t'ai montré ici. Donc, la première activité, euh, très simple, et puis euh, directement dans la suivante avec le, le Timio téléguidé. Donc, c'était déjà des élèves qui avaient des bases des Scratch et des élèves oui, mais oui, mes et élèves programment, ils, ils programment assez, assez régulièrement. On est dans, vraiment dans, impliqués dans tout ça. Ils programment à travers d'autres robots, Lego, Souris, euh, Mtini et euh, même dans Minecraft. Donc, euh, à 10 ans, euh, euh, oui. <rire> oui, on a mis ça en place. On était un projet pilote ici en Belgique. Et donc, euh, on a commencé très tôt, dès la première année. Et euh, à la partie de l'année prochaine, donc l'année prochaine ici, enfin dans le courant de cette année-ci, on va commencer aussi avec les plus petits, les plus jeunes. So I will quickly translate, maybe Sarah is yes. just the yes. question yes. was what age was for the project, and Pierre answered that his students have a very good level of already programmation is why it was more quick to do this activity with them because they already program with other other uh, language of programming. So that's the resume of the of the answer. Perfect. The lucky students, the one from Belgium, <laughs> to have you. <laughs> and I don't know if I miss or other questions. Yes. Uh, there was one, I think, uh, Johan, uh, with the scratch. Um, I think it's. Uh, just let me check. Uh, He's talking about Scratch. I think he retake the same question as Thomas, right? Um, Johan Vaida, you want to know if it is possible to program Timio Microbit Scratch. That's correct. Or because I have with Scratch point of interrogation, but I don't know what we were talking about. Uh, and Johan, if you if you want, you can you can just uh, open your speakers and uh, talk. Huh? No worry. Mm -hmm. huh. We oh, okay. Thanks a lot, Pierre, for uh, sharing the the link. We have another question from uh, Laurent. Uh, so. So the, the question from Johan first, it was Timio and Scratch, Timio and Microbit via Scratch. So Pierre, 
Est-ce yes, qu'on peut oui. connecter Timio et les Macrobits à travers Scratch Oui, à travers Scratch, mais dans la Timio Suite. Attention qu'il faut absolument passer par la Timio Suite. Le Scratch euh, traditionnel sur le site n'a pas l'extension Timio. Donc, on est obligé de passer par le Scratch dans la Timio Suite. So the reply is that yes, we can connect it, but we have to uh, connect via the Scratch from Timio Suite, from our uh, software, to connect Timio with Microbit. So we don't have the official uh, Scratch uh, extension, but we have the one from Timio. Uh, another question we had was uh, from Laurent. What should an inexperienced teacher to, to do to get started? So, Pierre, que, um, quel est la, un peu l'iter que tu as fait avec tes élèves pour, uh, pour commencer? Euh, donc, qu'est-ce que j'ai fait? Attends, je n'ai pas, pas compris la question, je n'ai pas vu où elle était. Ah oui, voilà. Euh... S'il y a un prof, en fait, il est vraiment dans les premières pas. Comment, comment initier les élèves à arriver jusqu'à là? Euh... Alors, euh, c'est compliqué. Euh, pour en arriver à un tel rendu, je pense qu'effectivement, il faut avoir mis en place bah, toute une série de séquences auparavant. Euh, il faut avoir compris une logique de programmation dans Scratch. Ça, ça c'est obligatoire puisque c'est lui qui va lier les deux plateformes. Euh, donc, ça passe effectivement par d'abord une compréhension de Scratch, mais assez simple pour faire les activités que j'ai présentées ici. Euh, celle future demande par contre euh, une plus grande connaissance, mais sur les, les, les basiques que j'ai montrées, euh, le Scratch de base est suffisant. OK, just to, to summarize, actually, it's a, it's a step by step learning uh, from the very basic and the logic of uh, Scratch. And then, uh, and then, yeah, step by step, you know, uh, introduce them to more complicated programming. Combien des années uh, t'as mis pour arriver jusqu'à là, du coup, avec tes élèves? Euh, on peut dire deux ans. Euh, C'est sur Timio. deux années, euh, puisque ils avaient déjà commencé Timio l'année avant. Et euh, cette année-ci, ils avaient commencé Scratch et la microbit. Mais la microbit, il y a vraiment eu peu de séquences. En fait, ce qui est assez amusant, c'est que ben, comme ils, ils manipulent plusieurs langages de programmation, euh, j'ai parfois l'impression que maintenant, je pourrais leur donner euh, un langage de programmation neuf et qu'après quelques minutes, ils pourraient euh, très facilement s'en sortir sans avoir finalement vraiment besoin de mon aide. C'est devenu une espèce de, de, de facilité pour eux de passer d'un langage de programmation à eux. Ils, ils cherchent un petit peu au début, mais après, ben, voilà, ils trouvent facilement... Euh, les correspondances. So his reply was that uh, the the kids he's teaching to uh, they are very flexible because they have been using different programming languages in different robots as well. So they are quite at ease as well to uh, look and uh, solve some problems even if they don't know the system and even if they don't know, they don't know the hardware. So it's a flexibility they have and they uh, they they got through the to through two years of uh, programming languages with the robots. So thanks a lot, everybody, actually. Um, I know that the, we didn't have any question from, um, for the Tanya project, which for me was the, uh, the most, uh, actually very, very deep project uh, that they arrived until the, Uh, the learning machine and the AI with the inserting a camera. Uh, actually, I would like to ask to Julian uh, some question about the project, which uh, interests me a lot. Hello, Julian. Hi, thanks for having us. Thanks a lot for being with us and until the end. And uh, actually, thanks a lot for being uh, uh, representing uh, the University of Lübeck. And uh, so, Your project, you were running uh, through throughout the years, and I saw you had different, very different projects. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was uh, the most interesting for me was the one with the camera. Mm -hmm. So how did you connect the camera, and which kind of camera did you use to connect the Timio with the Raspberry Pi, and uh, what kind of project do you have uh, for the future uh, with this, uh, you know, with these two. Uh, 
to uh, programming to robot the robot and the Raspberry Pi and the camera. Um, so <clears throat> I think the camera was a standard like uh, Raspberry Pi extension camera. Mm -hmm them in bags with the ribbon cable and then they just glued it uh, to a stand on the Fimeo and mm -hmm. there's there are some um, readily available software stacks uh, on the Raspberry Pi for these cameras mm -hmm. um, and sorry what was the second part of the question what if you have you uh, actually uh, because I saw that it was the last um, project you show with the camera so you you had a project. Can you explain a little bit more? What did you achieve with this project? So I think this is just the first step. And I, um, so so the research of my colleague uh, of, of Tanya is very much about world models, about the internal representation of the environment um, of the robot for the robot. Mm -hmm. And um, this camera project, um, what we're using there is called an, a variational autoencoder. So mm -hmm. we have this uh, very big, like a lot of data in in the in the image, and what we do is we compress it down with a neural network to a very small um, piece of data, like fifty values or a hundred values, yeah. and then we blow it up again to the to the image, and want it to be as similar to the original image as before. So it's a two step system of big, small, big. And then we we try to to uh, minimize the difference between the big uh, images, and what we get by this is a very small uh, representation of the environment, which is easier to process further for, for example, control applications like for robot control applications. Um, basically, what we're doing is um, having a very efficient representation of a complex sensor which might provide us with a little bit more information than the um, IR sensors we usually use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot for your, uh, for your reply. Actually, it's, uh, it's very interesting what you have been doing. Uh, we have uh, as well another question that is coming from Australia. <laughs> Hello, Peter. <laughs> so um, I don't know, uh, Julian, if you can reply to this question. So uh, how, how does, does the their Raspberry Pi communicate with the Tino via USB or wireless? So we are using um, a USB connection with um, mostly a Ziva Medulla with the software. So yes. thanks a lot for your reply. Uh, is, uh, is, is it OK, Peter, as a reply? If you want, you can as well uh, switch on your camera and uh, talk. Uh, no, no problem. We are at the end, almost at the hour webinar. So yeah, we have another question from Peter. Do you need to write special code for the Timio, Julian? Um, so yeah, so one little um, append, appendix to the last question. We're actually switching to Timio Direct in the future, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we don't really have to write a lot of special code for the Fimeo with the Ziva um, Medulla. We usually had a little uh, script, like it depends on the project. We had a little script for the for the B class that was shown in the video. We had a little script um, in uh, Ziva running on the Fimeo for controlling the LEDs. But usually it's it's the code is pretty robot agnostic. So um we could more or less run it on on other robots as well but then of course the like the the interface would change a little bit but um the basic stuff is i think the same okay thanks a lot answers the question yeah actually it's uh yeah peter as well thank you a lot for your question for your answers and actually uh, for me, it's very inspiring as well, seeing uh, that everywhere in the world, uh, they, you are using a uh, di different way Timio, and uh, in this case, in our in this webinar with the Raspberry Pi, so it was uh, quite high level, university level. But as well, we can use uh, at the elementary level, as we saw with uh, Pierre, with uh, his students, uh, with Microbit. So it's uh, it's very interesting, and uh, thanks a lot for being here for reply to our question to for sharing your uh, works and right now i will leave the stage to sofia 
which has some um exactly um, i have what? some announcements for that i will just share my screen give me one sec um do you see my screen with the Roteco web page open? Yes. Great. So you are all invited to this online uh, after work that we are going to have on the 22 of September. We are going to speak about an online escape game that Espaces Avancion has created. So the material will be in French, German, Italian, and English. It is for pupils uh, from uh, six primary to eight primary. And I don't want to spoil all the material, but you really have a beautiful documentation that accompany each, uh, um, each activity that the children can do. For example, if I go here on the pupil page, you have this online um, web page where you can connect click uh, and you will have this online escape game so you are more than welcome to come to this event that will launch this escape game online i will put the link on the chat afterwards another event that maybe will interest you is the code week that it's from the 8th until the 23 of october 2022 you have of course always the link here where it explains how a teacher can get involved. I am passing this information because a lot of you already code with the children, with your students, and the page of Code Week is in many languages, English included, so don't hesitate to go and see what is happening during this week. And the last announcement is that in 2000, each year, Roteco make like a um, survey for the community. And the last year a survey helped us to write an article about um, how to support the teachers to have this um, robotic teacher community. So if you are interested in reading more about it, um, I will send to you also the link on the chat. Thank you for your attention. And I will stop the sharing and I will put all the links on the chat now. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks a lot for, to, our, to our speakers for coming, for replying to our question, to the question of our public as well. I hope it was inspiring for you. It was uh, quite difficult for me to get to, to these uh, researchers, these guys, and I really appreciate this, uh, commit, their, his commitment, his commitments, their commitments. and. Uh, and this is something that uh, is uh, in our values to share things. And uh, thanks a lot for being part of this uh, as well community. Thanks a lot to everybody. And uh, hope to see you in the next webinar, which will be in French. And by the way, if you have any other question, we, we could reply by email, we could uh, reach the speakers, so don't, don't be afraid. You know, from time to time, it's even difficult to talk to a lot of public and uh, people. So if you want just to write them an email, don't hesitate. Thanks a lot to everybody and uh, a night nice evening. Yay. Bye, everybody. Thank you again. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Julian, to Pierre, to Norman, and of course, all the community that always Anna. connect and support us. Yes. Thanks a lot, Marcus, for being here as well. From Thank Singapore. you, Marcus. <laughs> from Australia, from, uh, yeah, from many countries. Very international as always, Sarah. <laughs> Great. So did you stop the... Ah, oh, sorry, I forget to stop the recording.